Hello everyone, welcome. Today I'm going to optimize the line drawing routine just a little bit. The line drawing routine could potentially be used to draw hundreds or thousands of objects per frame. We're going to do something with that routine to make it faster. Alright, so here we are back in the code. Let's bring up our shapes class. Here's the line drawing routine we had last time. I'm going to go to the game class. Let's just draw a bunch of lines to the screen to test how fast the current routine is. I'm going to bring in the diagnostic namespace and that'll give me access to the stopwatch. Let's create a new stopwatch here. Down in the drawing routine, let's just go ahead and get rid of all the shape drawing testing code we were writing before. We're going to tell it we want to start this the stopwatch, and then we're going to end, and then we're going to stop. And in here we're going to have a loop that's going to just loop through a bunch of lines, draw them, and uh, we're going to see how fast we can do it. For that to happen, let's make an array of vectors, and I'm going to call this points. These are going to be the endpoints of the lines we want to draw. And let's determine how many of these we want. Let's do a line count. Will be let's just draw 5,000 lines. Then the point count is just going to be the line count times two because every line will have two points. We're going to loop through every point and we're just going to create some random points on the screen. The first one will be AX and AY. I want to get the screen width and height. I want to make these random values so let's bring in the random object and create a new random object. I'm going to create the C to zero. That way we'll get the same random numbers every time just so our testing is consistent. We just need to get a random x and y to store as a point. So let's just use the random function, get a double. And when you call this function, it returns a value between 0 and 1. I'm going to cast this to a floating point because that's what we're using. And then multiply that by the screen width because I want a value somewhere between 0 and the width of the screen. And then y is going to be the same thing except we want to multiply by the screen height. Now we need to store this point. So in the points list i, we're going to say this is equal to a new vector 2 that is x and y. We have a series of random points that we can use to test. In between our stopwatch start and stop, let's loop through all of the points. I'm actually increasing the point count by two because I'm going to use two points because we need two points for each line segment. We'll say the first point A is going to be points I and B is going to be I plus one. And then we can just use those points to draw a line with the shapes class. We'll pass an A, B, the thickness will just be one and the color will always be the same. Let's just make it a dark blue. And actually I'm going to put that outside of the loop. We'll call this line color. I'm not sure if this makes a difference or not, but I don't want it to play into any of the testing at all. If we run this now, let's we are in debug mode. Let's just see what we get. And that looks right. It's, brought, it's drawing a bunch of lines. It should be 5,000 of them in there. I want to now get the results of this test to see how long the stopwatch recorded between the start and end there of this loop. I'm going to make a keyboard function that if I press the tilde key, let's do tilde, there we go, I want the console to tell me something. I want to tell me what the stopwatch has for the last elapsed, and then we want total milliseconds. Okay, so if we run this, next time I press the tilde key, it should tell us how long it took to draw all those lines. Okay. So about 2.5, looks like we're 2.1, 2.5, okay, mostly 2.1. All right, that looks pretty good. Now actually, let's switch this to release mode, and let's see if we run this without debugging, let's just see how long that takes. Now in release mode, with all the optimizations that the compiler can think of enabled, we're at 1.46. Let's go back to our shape class now. We're going to try and optimize this. I'm going to copy this code. And so now we have two of them. Here's the, 
the first one we made, I'm going to call this draw line slow. And then the second one, the only thing I'm going to do is just start breaking down all of these vector twos into floating point values. And so I'm basically going to start inlining all the vector twos. What I'm hoping will happen is it'll get rid of a lot of function calls we have in here. So let's just start rewriting this by breaking down all the vector twos into their basic floating point components. Maybe it'll get rid of some function calls and maybe the compiler will be able to find ways of optimizing the code. The first thing we're going to do is break down E1 into components. So I'm going to have E1x, that'll be equal to b.x minus a.x. We're going to have E1y is going to be b1 or by minus ay. Okay, so we have that broken down. Now we can get rid of that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to normalize those components. And we don't have a function for that yet, so let's go to the utility class and let's make a function to take care of that for us. And I'm just going to call this normalize. And we're going to pass in a reference to the components of the vectors we want to normalize. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the magnitude or the length of the vector defined by x and y. And the way you do that is you first, let's call this length, you multiply the components by themselves and then add them together and then you take the square root of the whole thing. That'll give us the length and then what we need to do is divide each component by the length. Now I'm not sure if the compiler would optimize this out but Usually division is quite a bit slower than multiplication with floating point values. I'm going to get the inverse of the length. And we'll just do 1 divided by the length. And then instead of multiplying, instead of dividing by the length, we'll just multiply by the inverse. And I'm hoping that'll be a faster operation. But again, maybe the compiler is smart enough to just realize what I'm doing here and just do the inverse anyways. Then I'm just going to get rid of this length value completely because we don't need that anymore. We'll just say this is the inverse length and I'll divide this by one and we can get rid of this whole line and there's our final function. So we have the normalize. We send in the x and the y and then it sends back in the x and y the normalized values because we pass those as reference. Back in our shapes class let's call that function. We're going to reference e1x and E1Y. Okay, so we can get rid of that. And then we need to multiply each component by half of the thickness. So we're going to have E1X times half thickness. And do the same thing for the Y. I guess we can get rid of that one. The rest of this should be pretty simple as far as to this point at least. We just need to break each one of these down into their individual components. So we're going to have E2X That'll be um, a negative E1 because it's just facing opposite directions. So it's a negative E1x. E2y is a negative E1y. So we got that one. Uh, next, oh, I got to define these now. So let's put floating point here. All right, next is N1. And for N1, we can just copy these individual components over. So let's just bring that over here. This is N1x, is that. And N1y is just the other component. Instead of dot .x, these are individual components specified. So we're just going to put, like, define them like that. Okay, so N1 is good. Now we want N2, which is simply the opposite sign of N1. We're going to have N2x is a negative n1x and n2y is a negative n1y. We can get rid of that one now. Okay, so now we have all the individual components broken down into the pieces we need. Let's go ahead and define each of the points of our quad by the different components. Let's just start with q1. I'm going to make a floating point for q1x. That's going to be ax and uh, actually at the top of this function, I want to break these vectors down into their individual components as well. So let's just do ax, ay, bx, and by. Let's change that here. So this is bx and by, ax and ay. 
And then here, do the same thing. So this wants an a vector, so we're going to do ax plus um, the next one is the n vector, so we want n1x plus the e2x. And let's do the same thing for the y values. That should be our first quad point, so we'll drop off this Q1. Alright, let's copy this and do the next thing. So now the second quad point, broken into components, will be... This one wants the B, so let's change these to B. Q2 also wants N1, so we're good there. And then it wants E1 at the end, so we need to change these two. Alright, let's do Q3 and get rid of Q2. So Q3 wants B as well. It wants N2 now here, so let's put 2. And then it also wants E1, so we're good there. And then finally, let's put uh, Q4 here. Q4, let's get rid of Q3. So Q4 wants the A values, so let's put A. And it wants the N2 values, so we're good there. And then it wants the E2 values, so we need to change this. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now everything should be broken down into their individual components. And over here, we're just going to send in the components instead of the vectors, so Q1, Y. Let's copy this and just paste it in there so I can change each value really quickly. So it's 2, 3, and 4. We have 2, 3, and 4. This function should work exactly like the other one, but broken down into components, I'm wondering if it'll be a little bit faster. I don't know, maybe the compiler will find some ways to optimize this code because it's seeing now the individual components. It's almost like, or, and maybe it's just the fact that we've just inlined everything into a ba very basic components instead of calling functions. But let's see if this is any faster. And I'm just going to make a draw line wrapper function so we can pass in vectors if we want to. And that's just going to go right ahead and call the draw line function. So let's pass in the components and the color. Okay, so now let's go ahead and call this draw line. This draw line function is now going to point to the new one we created. If I put slow here, that should be the old one. So let's put slow and just we can review and see what we were getting last time. Okay, so 1.4852, yeah. So that's what we were getting last time. Let's take off the slow part and just call the regular draw line. And let's see what kind of numbers we're getting now. Okay, good. So it looks like almost half, not quite there. In fact, we can, uh, let's do the numbers. So the last one was like 1.47, I think, so we're getting it. We'll divide that by uh, point. 85. Actually, I did, went the wrong way. We'll just take the inverse. So almost half. Uh, we almost got a speed increase of two there just by breaking that down to components. Okay, so that's all I wanted to do for the line drawing uh, routine. We've got it uh, running quite a bit faster. And actually, I wonder if I make this quite a bit larger. I wonder if I, let's change the line count to like uh, twenty thousand, and let's just see what we get for numbers. We'll call the slow function first. So now it's drawing 20,000 lines. It's taking 5.4, basically 5.5, 5.4 milliseconds to do that. And if we use the optimized routine, let's see how long that one takes. Uh, three, three milliseconds. Okay, so it's almost twice as fast. And it, we can do 5.5 divided by three so, you know, 1.83 times faster, so almost twice as fast with the optimized code.